Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I've been getting so many requests to make different versions of my dinner rolls, which is a really popular recipe on my website. Uh, and today we're gonna make like a garlic buttery Parmesan dinner roll. There, it's the same incredible like fluffy roll, but we're gonna flavor up a little bit. I figured we'll start slow with some like basic toppings, and then maybe I'll, in the future we'll do some herbs and whatever you guys want, which you can leave suggestions down below for different flavors you wanna see of dinner rolls. But the ingredients you'll need are very few, very basic, things like exactly like I did my uh, original recipe. You'll need all-purpose flour, some salt, granulated sugar, I've got some grated parmigiano here, which you'll need some more later, but we'll go into that in a bit. I've got some unsalted butter, I've got some yeast, I've got some egg yolks, and I've got some milk. And those are the ingredients you'll need to make the rolls, and then in a bit I'll show you the topping. Now the first thing I'm going to do, um, you can do this in the microwave, I'm just going to do this on my stove top because it's easy. In this little saucepan I'm going to put my milk and my butter, and I'm just going to kind of warm these up together just until the butter is melted. I don't want this to go above 115 degrees Fahrenheit because that's what I'm going to use to activate my yeast, and if it's any hotter, it's going to burn the yeast. We don't want to do that. I'm just going to turn this on low and just let that melt. That easy and simple. In the meantime, actually I'm just going to run back here and grab a whisk because in the meantime, I'm just going to take the bowl of my standing mixer that I have fitted with a dough hook, and in here, I'm just going to pop my sugar, I'm just going to reserve a, uh, the sugar and the egg yolks, and I'm just going to mix these two together briefly, just to incorporate them. And this is ready, you should be able to put your finger in there, it should be really nice and warm to the touch, it shouldn't be too hot, if it's too hot, let it cool a bit. That's as bad as it's gonna get. So what I'm gonna do now, what I have here is I just added like a teaspoon of sugar to my yeast, just because the sugar helps feed the yeast and helps it um, activate. And I'm just gonna set this aside until it foams up and you can really smell it. And when it's there, we will add that to that and we're pretty much in business. I'm just gonna take my flour, while that's doing its job, I'm just gonna take my flour, my parmigiano, and then my salt. And all I'm gonna do is mix these three together and get them ready. And now I'm just going to clean up, wait for that to activate, and we'll move on to the next step. You can see that the yeast has bubbled up, that's when you know it's activated. And I'm, I repeat myself every time I make any kind of dough that um, is a yeast dough, but that's because I want you to understand. In most cases, if you're making a yeast dough and it's not coming out, and you don't know what you're doing wrong, chances are that your yeast is not activated. It could be one of a few, few things. One, your yeast is expired. There's one. Two, the liquid is way too hot, therefore it kills the yeast right away. And three, the liquid is too cold and therefore it doesn't activate the yeast. So it's one of those three things. If you just get if you if your yeast is fresh and if your milk or your water or whatnot is at the right temperature, it should be around 115, 110, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. You're always in business. You're looking for those bubbles and you should really be able to smell it too. So I'm gonna just add that to my egg yolk mixture. I'm just going to whisk that in really quickly just because I feel like it takes one second to do that and um, sometimes it's better to do it by hand than with um, with a dough hook. And I'm going to add in my dry ingredients. You can do all this with your dough hook but all I'm going to do is kind of incorporate those just really quickly. That's good enough. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in here put my dough hook on, and now leave it on low until all the flour is incorporated, and then crank up the speed to like medium, and let it mix until you have really nice smooth dough, five to seven minutes or so. It could take a little bit less time than that, a little bit more time than that. You just, I'll, I'll show you what the dough looks like. And if you have to scrape the sides of the bowl in that, you know, five to seven minute period, make sure you do that because you wanna make sure all your flour is incorporated. So I'm gonna let that go. I'm going to grease my bowl here with some vegetable oil, and then we're ready to go. Now that is exactly what I'm looking for. It's not, you know, super sticky, but it's got a little bit of give to it. Right, let's take this out so I can get all my dough off the hook. It's off the hook. Get it? No? No one else gets it? Anyways, I'm just going to pop it out of here with my dough scraper. It's really, really easy. I'm actually just going to put it on my counter just for a second so I can pull it together with my hands really quick. And it's such a beautiful dough. Okay, make sure you, your surface is clean, which mine is. And now I've got my 
um, bowl here that I've oiled with some vegetable oil. You can use a little bit of, you know, vegetable oil spray, whatever you got. I flip it around so make sure that every bit of it is um, oiled, otherwise it'll form like a dry skin. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this with some plastic wrap and I'm going to put it somewhere warm for me. I, I always say it's in my microwave because it's right above my stove and I usually always have my oven on so it gets really nice and warm. Don't turn your microwave on though. Leave it in there for around an hour to an hour and a half until it's doubled in size and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. My dough is looking good. Now we're going to get on to making like the garlic topping that we're going to brush on top of this. I've got a small saucepan here and in here I'm going to put in some butter. Now, you can do one of two things. You can do what I'm doing now or you can finally chop your garlic. I really want a very strong garlic flavor so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grate this with a coarse grater and that way it just gives me a much stronger garlic flavor. If you don't want your garlic as strong, you can chop it with a knife or you can leave the cloves of garlic whole and just retrieve them once you're done infusing your butter. Why you'd want to do that, I have no idea, considering these are garlic parmesan rolls, <laughs> but I'm giving you the option. All I'm going to do is grate my garlic into the butter, and I'm doing it now before I melt the butter because I don't want the butter to burn, I don't want the garlic to get golden brown, I want the butter and the garlic to come to temperature together, and then by the time the, gar the butter is melted, the garlic has infused in the melted butter without the garlic getting burnt and coming, you know, becoming bitter. So. It all works really well on my head, and I promise you it's going to work out really well in the end as well. So this is my last clove. I did about four big fat cloves of garlic, and I'm just going to make sure they get the back. And I'm going to put this on my burner and let these come to temperature and melt together. Now, what I have here is my dough. I'm just going to sprinkle some flour on my surface, not too much. I also have a 9 by 13 inch baking pan here that I've got oiled with a little bit of vegetable oil. That's good to go. My dough is looking good, springing back beautifully. I'm going to get this out of here. And I'm going to cut this into 16 equal pieces. So what I do is I just, you want to make sure you flatten it. And then I kind of, you know, make it into like a log, just like so. And then if you want to take out a scale and measure each one so that they're perfect, by all means do that. I'm no way, shape, or form going to do that because I want to get these done and into the oven. So you want to cut this into 12 equal pieces. Now, you can cut these in 16. I meant to say that I'm going to cut them in 12. But you can cut them in 16 and you'll get smaller size dinner rolls. I just like the big fat ones. I love my carbs. I can't help it. So... That's why I'm going to kind of do bigger ones. Okay, they look good. My butter is melted, turning this off right away. That's good to go. I'm going to take each roll, each piece of dough, I'm going to kind of form it into a bun, pinch the bottom, and put it into my baking dish. You want to put it um, seam side down, of course. And I just kind of do this how I would do, how I would roll pizza dough. And you pinch the bottom and you put it in. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pastry brush and my garlic infused butter. I'm going to just brush every single one of them, make sure that that garlic really gets on there good. I want to make that garlic really present in this recipe. Now I'm just going to take some Italian seasoning and I am going to sprinkle them that evenly over the top. You can use any mix of seasonings you like. You don't want to use garlic, by all means don't use garlic. You want to use just thyme and rosemary, use just thyme and rosemary. I like this blend, so that's what I use. And I don't want to put too, too much on there because otherwise it can be quite overpowering. So I'm going to sprinkle that and then I'm going to grate some cheese right over the top of each one. Once you've got your parmigiano on there, now these have to rise again. I'm going to just cover these loosely with my plastic wrap that I was that I had covered the bowl with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a lint-free kitchen towel, pop these back into the microwave without turning it on for about an hour or so or until they've just about doubled, but not totally. I'll show you what they look like when they're there. And that's about it, really. Ah, they look perfect. 
All right, I'm gonna pop these into the oven. I have my oven preheated to 375, and these are gonna go in there for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they're beautiful golden brown, and I will show you what they look like when they're there. My rolls were in the oven for about 20 minutes and they are absolutely beautiful. They're a beautiful deep golden brown color from that garlic butter and you can really smell the garlic as well. Let me see, oh, I'm gonna get this one right over here. And you can make them smaller, but I mean, look at that. Look at the top. First of all, look how golden that cheese gets like crispy. These are still really hot and they're probably gonna steam, yeah. But look, look at that. I mean, seriously, look how fluffy they are. Now, my original, you know, plain dinner roll recipe is really, really popular, and I constantly get pictures posted on my Facebook page of you guys remaking these, and they look perfect. All the pictures that have been posted on my Facebook of these, of these rolls look absolutely perfect. That's because the recipe is really foolproof. Now, the thing is, when you have a foolproof recipe like a white bread dough or like a dinner roll or a pizza dough or a cinnamon roll dough, never change the recipe of the dough, just change the flavorings. So you have something foolproof and then change it up a million ways. This is just a really simple, um, I'll have to. Mm. Wow. This is just a really simple variation, but it's one of my favorites. You can definitely taste the garlic, nice and salty from the cheese, but still sort of that buttery sweet dinner roll. It's just, it's incredible, and they're really easy. Go to lauraimthekitchen.com to get this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Keep posting pictures on my social media. I will leave all the links down below. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me, and I will see you next time. Bye.